Good, good afternoon, everyone. Yes. I always have to say that uh, we are recording our meetings. So if by any chance you don't want to, you know, yourself, your name to appear on the screen, uh, please, uh, this is the moment uh, to rename yourself. You can go on the top of your image and rename yourself, remove your image. We have to have this disclaimer before we start, okay? Thank you so much for the prayer. We will You're continue welcome. today with our study of the Spirits book. We are almost finishing the book, which is, you know, quite nice. something, right? I mean, it's. Uh, I think it's wonderful that we <coughs> are reaching this uh position that we we have already studied almost the whole book i guess by next week we will be finishing it and uh, so we are in question 998 and now we would like to ask philip to read for us does atonement happen in the physical state or in the spirit state Atonement happens during the physical state through the trials to which the spirit is subjected. In the spirit state, it is accomplished through moral suffering corresponding to the spirit's inferiority. We're going to stop here. Um, why? Because there is always this impression when we start studying spiritism that, uh, and quite often this is what people say, that we reincarnate on earth exactly you know to atone to make amends to go to trials and atonements expiations and uh, it gives us the impression that when we are on the spiritual world there is no progress and this is not correct uh in the spiritual world we are going to uh, uh, achieve progress as well maybe not necessarily by the same kind of experiences that we have while we are on earth but in in different ways like they say here in terms of atonement many times it can even be related to our physicality to how you know our body is going to resent things that we have uh, provoked and uh, by reincarnating we will have some problems with our physical body for for example but on the spiritual state and the spirit state as they say here we also will go through you know remorse regret sadness uh, um, uh, guilt or you know I, I of course i'm just listen listing the, the negative things because we are talking about trials and atonements here, okay? But the same way, of course, we have our happiness, our joy, our faith, and all of that. So it, it's very important for us to, to have this understanding that in the spiritual world, it's very much like when, you know, when we go to college or when you go to school. This is where we learn. This is where we have the opportunity of, you know, um, uh, even start working like uh, the student work. How do you call it exactly? I forgot this. Um, uh, this free work that the, the students do. Um, oh my God! It, it it escaped from my from my mind. It's like stagiario. What would be the? Um, well, it, it, internship. 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 Yes, uh, something like this. Like, like a, st a student do so it is going to be the same thing we will have a, of course the occasion of putting in practice things that we are learning already but very much like we said when we go to school uh, uh, when you graduate is when you have the expertise and you are going to go out in the world to put in practice what you have learned but you are learning and you are having opportunity to grow as well. Okay, let's go to 999, please. Does sincere repentance during life erase the faults of that life and bring the offender back in God's favor? 
Repentance helps advance the betterment of the spirit. However, wrongdoing must be atoned. If a criminal says, since I have to atone my past, I have no need to repent. What effect does this have on him or her? If such a person is hardened by thoughts of wickedness, their atonement is longer and more strenuous. Can uh, we, yeah, can we read the, the 1000? Yeah. Can we redeem our faults in our present life? Yes, by making amends for them. However, do not assume that you can redeem them by making a few trivial sacrifices or by giving away what you no longer need after your death. God does not value a fruitless repentance that is... Sorry. Sorry, sorry, Philip. I... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, mute yourself, please, Philip. I, I was trying to mute uh, other sounds here. Can you um, unmute yourself, uh, Philip, or, or no? It's unmuted. Can you okay. hear me? Okay. Yeah, please read again the 1000, okay? Can we redeem our faults in our present life? Yes, by making amends for them. However, do not assume that you can redeem them by making a few trivial sacrifices or by giving away what you no longer need after your death. God does not value a fruitless repentance that is easily completed and costs no more than a mere smiting of the chest. The loss of a small finger while doing good for others erases more wrongdoing than any amount of self-inflicted torture undergone solely for one's self-interest. Wrongdoing can only be atoned by doing good, and attempts at making amends are worthless if they affect neither one's pride nor one's material interests. How can a person be rehabilitated by the restitution of tainted wealth after death when it has become useless to them and they have already profited by it? What benefits can a people derive from the deprivation of a few futile pleasures and indulgences if the wrongs they have done to others are not undone. What in truth is the point of humbling themselves before God if they keep their pride before other human beings? Okay, so here we are talking about, you know, the, the act of repentance, right? Um, and, and, and it's very important for us to meditate about it uh, because I, I think, I believe, we, we still have that same uh, old concept of, you know, if I do not repent, if I do not pay for my debts, God is going to punish me. And it has, has nothing to do with that or with the exterior uh things is mostly about how we feel internally the one that truly repents it's not going to be necessary for this person to go and say okay uh now you need to make amends the person is going to feel the need of making making amends so we still think, okay, now I repent, now I must make I will I must make amends, like you know, it's part of a process. The the understanding of the wrongdoings that we did and how they affect our spiritual integrity, our consciousness, our road to purification will not allow us to move forward 
unless we find ways to erase the bad deeds with good deeds. So this thing of saying, well, there is no need for me to repent because I, I will have to, you know, to pay anyway, to atone anyway. It has, uh, it, it, it's, this is not going to be an atonement, it's going to be an expiation. It's going to be something that, you know, the person will go through not out of their own will, but, their, but by imposition, which shows that the person itself is not yet conscious of the need of doing something. I mean, it, let's think about something. I do something bad to Sorida, okay? And I don't care. I mean, it's her life. I'm going to live my life. Then I, I, I somehow, you know, through life and through experiences and learning, once it comes to my mind, oh my God, I remember that day that I did something to her and how it affected her. And now it is starts to weigh on me this, you know, this action that I should have, uh, prevented myself or shouldn't have done and so this is the first stage but now I say poor her because of this you know situation that I created she went to more struggles and isn't there anything that I can do perhaps to alleviate her even if only by praying to her or by going back to her, you know, if there is a financial struggle, donate something. <clears throat> or if she's in lack of uh, friends, I, I can become friends with her. So I, I will not feel content or contentment until I, I do something about it. And this is no longer God or the spirits or anyone pushing me to do that. This is my own conscious, my consciousness that will uh, require from me to go and make amendments. Let's take this example about the AA, right? Uh, I think there is those, I heard about this 12 steps. And one of the steps is, is you going to reconciliate with people that you have harmed okay and so you have to go there and reconciliate and talk about it and it's like you you actually read yourself from a burden from a you know this uh uh feeling that you you have been doing something wrong so this is this is what we have to understand it's not by imposition from outside is us ourselves the more we evolve the more our consciousness will not allow us to just uh, ignore okay it was with my past i was truly ignorant no uh, okay i can't even realize that but i will say but but what the thing is i i committed some wrongdoings is there anything that i can do to cover this multitude of wrongdoings and it's when uh by uh having this understanding and committing ourselves to be better to do better and to help is so important and here i think it's very important this phrase that they say the loss of a small finger while doing good raises more wrongdoing than any amount of self-inflicted torture. So like, you know, this vain promises that we do to God. If God helps me in some, something, I'll stay a year without uh, eating chocolate. <laughs> I mean, do you think God is really <laughs> worried whether you are eating chocolate or not? Say it's like you know all these chocolates belong to God, and you say, "Okay, God, I will not take the chocolates from you." What 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 childish way 
is this one of us, you know, trying to bargain with God. It's, it's that lesson that we have that we study also in the gospel according to spirit is in terms of reconciliation with our brothers and sisters, because, you know, it says before you go and offer something in the altar to God, leave it there and reconciliate with your brothers and sisters while you are in the way. So it's not self-infliction, mutilation, like, you know, I'm going to be whipping my back or something like that is going to be pleased to God. But everything that we do that is actually going to make an impact in our environment, in the people that are around us. Again, that's the reason why those things cannot be imposed because they are the byproduct of our spiritual involvement. We can hear about them, we can agree or do not agree, but until you, we do it out of our own will, it, it's not going to be the same. Uh, again, remember that we are always talking this in terms of theory, theory, we know how important it is, but we also have to understand that each one of us, we have to walk on our own pace. So we have to keep that in mind. So this is the ideal because I, I have to know my, what is the ideal. I don't need to be in this idea right now, but I, I need to know what is the road I have to take. And the road is this one, where without any uh, pressure from beliefs, from people, from God, from the good spirit, but from yourself saying, I have to do something about it. And it's got, it will come naturally and it will not feel as a sacrifice. It will feel only as the natural consequence, the right thing to do, which is not necessarily sacrifice. Okay, so now if you want to comment and question. Uh, Jussara. Yes. It's so interesting. I was thinking about the book Heaven and Hell where Kardec said that when you did something, a wrongdoing, you need to go to repentance and acknowledgement of the fault, then expiation or atonement, and the third one, reparation. So I think uh, sometimes we're still in the first step, yeah, to acknowledge. Because I was uh, watching this interview of this young guy from South Africa, who is an activist, and he, uh, he said that when Nelson Mandela and he took power in South Africa, one of the things they want to do, they want to move forward regarding racism, like what they could do to bring the communities together. So they brought all the people, the, the, the white community that was racist and provoked so much crimes against the Afro community uh, to acknowledge and, uh, and apologize publicly. And I think this goes to where uh, the spirits say, wrongdoing can only be attuned by doing good and attempts at making amends are worthless if they affect neither one's pride nor one mature's interest. So he said that at that moment that those officers, of course that's not gonna excuse how many crimes they commit, but to go publicly in front of everybody in the news and to say, I killed, I did this and this over years and years, work so much in something within themselves that he said as an activist, he felt that he started the process of move forward because before they wouldn't even acknowledge. Then I asked a lawyer here in the United States who work on this field and I asked why in America everything needs to be paid uh, with, or, like need to be with a compensation, a material compensation. Sometimes you have a moral crime and they give them uh, like a money value for that. And uh, it's difficult for me at least to understand that. He said that in, uh, in the American culture, in, uh, to work on their pride, it needs to be on the financial aspect. And goes to the second part of this question, where Kardec say, the spirits say, affect neither one pride nor one mature's interest. So it seems that both understood collectively that this is the way to go. Of course, you know that the big change, you need to be from inside. 
their understanding to acknowledge publicly in South Africa and exposing themselves. Here, paying a material amount of money for something you have done wrong, both in some ways start the process of acknowledging and going to that uh, journey. It's quite beautiful. beautiful. Even though it's very slow, yeah? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I make a kind of an adaptation of this Kardex uh, uh, from the heaven and the hell, and I call it the three R's. Like, you know, is the reflection the, being the acknowledgement, the reparation and the, the regret and then the reparation that means renewal as well. So I call it the three R's. <laughs> yeah, that is very, very important. Anyone else? There is a question on the chat from Orlando. And he said the following, what type of compassionate message would Joana de Angelis would say to those who have died without their loved ones on next to them? You are spiritists that seems to relate to her and understand her compassion. And then he continues, the law say you have to pay your dues, wrongdoing. Anything else is justification? Uh, it's not the law that we have to pay. This is what exactly what we were saying before, that it doesn't happen. I mean, the law says that we have to walk through, the, through righteousness. This is what the law says. And it gives us uh, ways of doing that. It sends us people to teach us on how to walk through righteousness. So this is what the law says. The law doesn't require us to pay from our wrong duties, the wrong wrongdoings. It is the natural consequence of our free will of what we have decided. The law just teaches us how to go through the right path. Every time we don't go through the right path, we are uh, submitting ourselves to the dangers of, and consequences of the ways. So this is something that has to be very well established. As we always say, God has nothing to do with that. And it's interesting that we, you say in terms of, uh, you know, people dying alone um i understand that this is a situation that we are all feeling that it's happening now but uh in a way we all go through the pro process of being born and dying alone in fact in some situations if we read the book also i, I think in the, the book from andrea lewis uh, the uh, how much one is the the one that talk about death um, is not in the greater world is uh, workers of life eternal work of life eternal thank you uh, uh, it, it, it also mentions and some of the other books mentions that sometimes the presence of immediate family uh, when we are in the process of dying can only disturb us uh because the family is going to it is going to be that struggle between the the one that is bedridden in the process of dying uh wanting to or in the process of being liberated and the family providing extra energy for this not to happen so the struggle is even more difficult and one thing that we always have to remember, we are never alone. We always have God with, with, with us, not to mention everyone that God has designated to be with us. And even the process of the dying, if we read the book from Andrea Lewis, Missionaries of the Light, uh, I think in the Missionaries of the Light also, it talks about... Uh, you know, the group of spirits that have to be, uh, yeah, uh, they, they are involved in the, in the process of helping the connection of a spirit to be born. And those that are also responsible 
for disconnecting us. So even if we want to, we cannot die and discard it alone. There will be a team of spirits that are in charge of going through this process of disconnecting us from the physical body. So I think this is much more than compassion on the part of God. This is love. Okay, so let's read uh, 1001. Philip, can you read for us uh, 1001? Is there no merit in ensuing the worthwhile use after we die of the property we once possessed? Merit is not the word. Although it is better than doing nothing, people who give away, give only after they die are often motivated by selfishness rather than by generosity. They want the honor of doing good without any cost to them. People who impose deprivation upon themselves during their life reap a double reward, the merit of their sacrifice and the pleasure of witnessing the happiness they have caused. Selfishness is likely to taunt. Whatever you give away will lessen the enjoyment of what you keep for yourself. The voice of selfishness is louder than that of charity, and too often it leads a person to keep what they have under the pretext of necessity. You should pity a person who does not know the joy of giving because they deprive themselves of one of the purest and sweetest pleasures in life. In subjecting a person to the trial of wealth, which can be very dangerous for their for future, God places the happiness that generosity may secure for them within their reach, even in the present life. Hold the next one, please. What happens when individuals acknowledge their fault on their deathbed? However, they do not have time to make amends. Is repentance alone enough in such a case? Repentance accelerates rehabilitation, but it does not absolve it. Don't they have the whole future ahead and new opportunities to make amends will always be open to them. Okay, so here uh, uh, we see, you know, certain very interesting and important questions that Kardec posed to the spirits about, you know, living, let's say, our possessions to the poor after we die. Of course, uh, it's always going to be good. It's always going to be a merit. Every time we are doing something good, it's very important. But uh, since intention is much more important than everything else, uh, if uh, our intention is that, you know, while I'm alive, I'm going to enjoy everything that I have. Then when I die, when I die, I don't need them anymore. So who knows, just in case I can bargain with God, I will do some good deeds and maybe I will return to the spiritual world in a much better condition. So uh, like they say, although it can be of help, because you could just uh, not care at all, at all of, uh, in terms of, and I, I know there are people that say, I, I, after I die is not, no longer my problem, that not even in this case is going to think about helping the poor or doing some charitable actions. But uh, like the, the page says here, I mean, it would be so much more important to you if you could do that while alive. Uh, you know, that's why in a way to pay or, you know, to give the 10% <laughs> is not such a bad idea. Not, you know, imposing or bargaining, but just by, you know, saying, 
I could perhaps spare ten percent of what I earn to to do to to help someone. I don't know, you know. Uh, it's for for us to think about it, to to meditate about it. And in terms of uh, repentance on our deathbed, this is one of the reasons why Spiritism advises us not to shorten our lives, especially when we are at the deathbed bed, uh, even contemplating perhaps using the resource of euthanasia because every second counts and every second that can lead us to reflect about our lives and to 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 go through this process of repentance is already one step further in the direction of our own spiritual improvement so okay we will have to go through all the process the rehabilitation process the renewal process but it like i said is 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 less through an imposition and more through a serious acknowledgement of ourselves that we have to do something about to compensate for the bad deeds that we have provoked. So although materially speaking, we will not have time to do that anymore, spiritually speaking, we have the whole way, eternity ahead, and we will have new opportunities of coming back. Any question or comment to this? Yes, Orlando has one. Regarding, to, regarding the questions, does not free will cause uh, conflict and confusion? <laughs> no, never. Free will. Uh, but I mean, I don't know what you're doing with your free will, uh, Orlando. My free will is not con <laughs> making any kind of confusion with that. But every because everyone has their free will and their free thinking, uh, I, I cannot answer for everyone, you know. The... The purpose of free will would not be conflicting, but what we do, each one of the us with that may cause conflict, con conflict because of the way we are reasoning and leading our lives. But in the end, through this process of spiritual realization and growth, uh, uh, the usage of our free will will no longer provoke zones of conflict because uh, uh, that we pro uh, we do uh, due to our own imperfections anyone would like to comment something or no okay so let's talk about duration of future atonements is the duration of time that the guilty must suffer in a future life governed by any law. God never acts on a whim. Everything in the universe is ruled by laws that reveal the Creator's wisdom and goodness. What determines how long a guilty person must atone? The length of time required for their betterment, a spirit's happiness or unhappiness corresponds to their degree of purification. The duration and nature of this suffering depends on the time it takes them to improve. As spirits progress, they refine their views. Their torment diminishes, and this changes their nature. Okay. Oh, this is no less than the spirit of St. Louis that <laughs> gave us those answers. Uh, you see, when we were reading that, I was thinking about the, the parable of the, uh, the workers of the last hour. Mm. That they all received the same salary. One is started early in the morning and the others midday and the others at the last hour and they all receive it the same salary. What does this mean? That some people have perhaps, you know, uh, not work it that fast and uh, then others or it started earlier but went in their own pace and the other ones that had to catch up 
like ourselves, we are in this situation. We were lazy for many incarnations. Now they said, you know what? There is still time to be part of this race and go to the finish line. But it's going to be much harder for you because you will have to do the work that others are doing in 12 hours. You have just one hour to do, but it is possible. It is feasible. So here, the duration depends on us. It's everything about how I reason, how I learn, and how most importantly, after learning, decide to put that in practice. If I still thinking, oh, okay, <laughs> right, I'm an immortal spirit. I have so many incarnations. I, I think I'm going to split <laughs> my, my, my progress in three or four incarnations. Well, it can be, it, it's your free will, it's your choice. So here, that's why it is so hard to say how long it's going to take for each one of us to rehabilitate ourselves. I am the only person that uh, uh, is in control of how long it's going to take. It's my choice. It's my actions. So a year it's saying you have the opportunity. It's uh, whether you're going to embrace it or not and how it's up to you. It's so, so sad, right? To have all this responsibility. <laughs> it's the growing pains. No, <laughs> right? I think it goes it back. Is. Yeah. It goes back, it goes back to the, the book, Heaven and Hell, to acknowledge yeah, and to, to repent in the beginning. Yeah. Because if I don't know myself, if I don't know uh, what I have done, if I don't have like, a, if I don't understand my tendencies, it's hard for me to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we, we have the aim to, to be happy, we have the aim to prosper, to multiply blessings, but we still need to acknowledge something that might be hidden within ourselves. Yeah, I was doing the journey of Marlon Rekidal, my uh, patent, I don't even know how to say this in English, uh, the journey within. I think it is a study he's doing like more than 24 classes to really go through very deep within ourselves. And he said, like, just to acknowledge that we are vain, to acknowledge that we are selfish or that we are jealous or that we have fear already transforms so much. Yeah. It can bring so, so much healing to us. But to be in denial, I think I talk about myself. It's so easy to live a life on denial. But uh, you don't progress much because you're holding opportunities, yeah, to expand. Mm -hmm. It's a process. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing that you said, that you saw in terms of, you know, this little word that can hinder our progress so much, denial. Until we have the courage to face ourselves and to say... Even if I have to say, like, you know, we will have to say that many times, you know. There are so many wrong things, and I can I, I, I don't see that I can correct right now. Even if I have to acknowledge that, we cannot live in denial. Okay, so you cannot do that right now, but uh, there are some that you can. And knowing that you already have to do something about it, it's progress. So what we should not fear is to, to have to acknowledge that we are imperfect. If I fear that, if I live in denial, I mean, I'm one step behind or many steps behind because I will still have to go through this process of realization. Or do we think that everyone that now already uh, overcome uh, their imperfections, they haven't gone through the same process. Everyone may go through the same process. Again, the duration of this process, depending depend on each one of us, I may, you know, uh, awaken to this reality faster and then i will say I'll, I'll i'll you know i'll take control and i will do it 
and uh, others may go uh, slower, but the, the process is this one. And the first thing is to stop living in denial. Or don't no, see that I'm not trying to, to, you know, to, to, to show others that we are better than others. We are, we're not. Yvette, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Orlando mentioned again, can God's mercy and forgiveness erase our wrongdoing? Uh, what was the first uh, word I can go? In God's mercy and forgiveness, erase our wrongdoing. No. <laughs> In the sense of God's mercy, give us opportunity and, and forgiveness, give us opportunities to erase our own wrongdoing. Because again, I mean, it's like uh, I'm going to, I want to give uh, uh, a deal some a cake. I'm always talking about food, right? <laughs> oh my God. Ah, yeah, yeah. All my examples are about food. <laughs> but Fernanda, I'm... cook a cake to okay. Thank you, Sarah. She missed your cakes. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. I, I promise you I will. To Orlando. And then I will ask Fernanda, Fernanda, bake a cake to me that I want to give to, to not to Orlando, to, to Adilson. And then I go to Adilson, here Adilson, uh, this cake is for you. But I mean, I didn't do nothing. The one that did was Fernanda, okay? So it's the same thing here, you know, uh, God cannot do the things that we are supposed to be doing. He gives us all the ingredients. Everything is going to be in your kitchen for you to do like, you know, this short uh, strawberry shortcake, right? Uh, Soraida or the carrot cake from... <laughs> okay, I really need the cake. Anyway, so we have all the ingredient, ingredients. But God cannot go to our cook, kitchen and cook, and cook for us. We have to do that. So that's, that's what it is here. And the mercy is that he gives all the possibilities, the imaginable and unimaginable possibilities for us to do ourselves. I think based on what uh, you said, Orlando, we still have the idea that God punishes us and goes back to what Jesus said in the beginning. He's an educator. It's not that uh, uh, he's, we are going to these tribulations because we are gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna be punished. No, it's just because there are lessons that need to be addressed to build the virtues within ourselves and it's an opportunity. So it's a blessing. When you go to the Sermon of the, man, uh, the Mountain, blessed are the afflicted. Blessed are the ones who are persecuting the cause of justice. It seems that, oh my God, do I need to go through this? No, it's just like we are here to learn beautiful lessons. It seems to be difficult because it's a good college. Every good college, every good school requires a lot of efforts from each one of us. And this is a blessing. But I think sometimes we see that as a negative value. It's still because we don't see the mercy and the love of the educator that we have. Okay, let's read uh, two more and then for, <clears throat> for a suffering spirit, does time appear longer or shorter than when it was on earth? It appears longer as there is no such thing as sleep for it. When spirits attain a certain level of purification, time fades away, so to speak, before infinity. Can the duration of a spirit's suffering be eternal? Of course, if it were eternally wicked, meaning if it were to never repent or atone, it would suffer forever. Nonetheless, God has not created human beings to let them be victims of immortality forever. God created them simple and ignorant, and all of them must progress in due course, according to their will. The determination to advance may arise at any time, 
as a child's development may be more or less precocious. However, an irresistible desire to escape a state of inferiority and to be happy stimulates a spirit to do better. The law that regulates the duration of a spirit's misery is incredibly wise and compassionate. That duration depends on its own efforts. It is never deprived of its free will. However, if it uses it improperly, it must bear the consequences of its errors. Okay, so again, the duration uh, of our uh, uh, suffering, again, depends only on us. We cannot blame God for, for, for that. And uh, since the law is that of progress, uh, regardless of how long it's going to take, all of us will come uh, at a point in our immortal life that will say enough is enough. Now, uh, I, I'm just getting, you know, uh, suffering from my behaviors. It's time for me to, to change. I mean, all this formula that I've been using to conduct my immortal life is not working. It's not bringing me any happiness, peace of mind and satisfaction. And so we, it will come a point where we are going to be tired of uh, just going against, uh, against the, the natural laws. And of course, it's very hard for us to try to measure time in the spiritual realm with time that we have on earth. Uh, we cannot even imagine that. And like they say, the needs of the spirit are different as well. You know, sometimes we say here, oh, I wish the, the day had more than 24 hours, but we sleep six, seven, eight hours a day. So you could have uh, the whole 24 hours, but you use uh, many of the, those hours, in my case, <laughs> is sleeping and resting. So, you know, um, how can we uh, compare or how can we understand? And uh, even, you know, when we think about uh, the difference in times that we have in the, in the universe, here we have 24 hours in a different planet. It's, no, it's not 24 hours. It's not 30 days. It's, uh, you know, the revolution in, uh, 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 around the, the sun. All of that changes. And, of course, it's going to change as well in terms of, you know, um, of how our, uh, how our spiritual involvement. And, again, uh uh, at the same time, that is, you know, the good news, you know, what is the good news and the bad news? The good news is uh, your happiness is in your hands. The bad news is your happiness is in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> so it's up to us. And again, unfortunately, we cannot blame God or put God in the equation and no one else. It's just up to us. So I'll stop sharing now. Uh, we have a few minutes before if anyone has a comment or question. Okay. Can I say something? Yeah. Then, then, okay. Then remind me one sentence then. We are God. We are God. Then, then when I think about things, I think about this, the conscience, our conscience. And then when you say about God punish or something like this, then I, for me, 
it's ourselves because inside us we have this conscience the seeds of God inside us that's why all responsibility is inside us it's our conscience it's about ourselves to drive the consequence of our attitudes yeah I, I wouldn't say we are God I would say we are gods <laughs> just uh, you know to make clear that uh, you know a God is just one and gods in the way that Jesus said is the possibility that we have to become perfected spirits which mean that we have so I mean from our perspective if we could see ourselves to Sarah, Sonia, Jill, so, uh, Philip, Pastor Ryder, Orlando, Fab, everyone that is his, if we could see ourselves, uh, I don't know, 10,000 years from now, we would look at us and say, oh my God, I, we are superheroes. <laughs> at least that, right? I do hope so, right? That in 10,000 years, I can at least look at myself and say, oh my God, I can fly, I can read minds, I can dislocate, do the bi bicorpority like, you know, Euripides Barsanufo and others would like, to, uh, 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 did uh, fly like Daniel Douglas home, you know, so things that we can see already here. So I think it's more in this sense that Jesus said, you are God, because there are so many possibilities that it's, you know, in this seed that represents our spirit, that is still barely breaking <laughs> ground to so start growing and flourishing. So we don't know about our possibilities. And of course, in this sense, Sonia, it's very much like you said, is everything about our consciousness and how are we going to be open to acknowledge, to reason, to look for, you know, what is within our reach that can help us to say what is right and what is wrong and uh, motivation to to do those things so I, I think it's more or less through this road that we have to go and again comes back to what Adilson said earlier in terms of denial while I'm still saying pau que nasce torto morre torto oh let me translate that oh the <laughs> any anyone can help me uh, let's see when uh, we have a, a saying in, in, in Portuguese that says, if you are, you know, like a, a stick of wood that was uh, born like bending, there is no way that is going to be straight. And so why bother? So in terms of spiritism, this saying has no sense at all. I can be born like this, you know, my possibilities are <laughs> not so good, but with my effort, I can be like this. You and can, you can use like part of the others. Yes. To, to, to give some directions for this it, it, small it, plant it, to yeah. be a strong tree. Then this, yeah. Yeah, we know those who learning here, right? Who do gardener? They understand that. Sometimes you you put some sticks and and just to give this direction. So the sticks is exactly what we have in terms of people that come and clarify things for us. Uh, you know, all this knowledge, all this understanding, all the family support and etc that will help us in this process of uh, uh, continuing straight, <laughs> okay? So who's going to do the prayer for us? It's gonna be 